My name is Sukari Prabo, and I'll be teaching you physics today. And on physics, we'll be looking at the topic energy quantization. We'll be looking at the first part of this topic. In energy quantization, we'll be looking at energy levels in atom. We'll be looking at energy quantization, and then we'll look at photoelectric effect. Energy quantization. What actually is energy quantization? Quantization of energy is referred to as the absorption or emission of energy in discrete or fixed amounts or packets or quanta by substances. So the absorption or emission of district or packets of quanta of energy by substances. Now, energy is normally radiated from these substances, and this energy is not a continuous quantity, but it's in packets or discrete quantities. Now, this hypothesis was suggested by Max Planck and Bohr's model of the atom. We're going to look a little bit in depth. According to Planck's theory, substances emit radiation in fixed amount of energy or quantum of radiation. Now, this relationship between the emission of energy or radiation by substances is given by E equals HF, where E is the energy that is radiated and F is the frequency of the radiation. So H is equals Planck's constant with a fixed value of 6.6260 times 10 raised to the power minus 34 joules second. We're going to be looking next at energy level. Specific or district amount of energy that an electron can have when occupying specific orbit around the nucleus. Electrons are arranged around the nucleus in positions known as energy levels or electron orbit or electron shell. If we look at the electron, let's take this as an example. This is the nucleus which is positively charged and we have electrons that are negatively charged moving around it. We can have several other shells with electrons on them, each negatively charged, revolving or moving around the nucleus of the atom. So electrons in orbit closest to the nucleus have highest energy. Thus, it will take more energy to remove this innermost electron than it will to remove the outermost electron in an atom. Now, electrons in the closest orbit to the nucleus are said to be in the ground state or the lowest energy level, while the energy in an electron is given by this expression here. E equals minus 1 all over n squared multiplied by r. N in this expression is the electron's quantum number from 1 to infinity. Where when n is equal to 1, it means that the electron is in the ground state and it is most stable. And when n tends towards infinity, it means that the electron is most unstable and can easily be knocked off from the atom, meaning it is ionized or can go into reacting with another substance. R is a constant. Electrons can be excited to higher energy level by absorbing energy through heating or bombardment with another energetic particle. Now, the electron in this state becomes unstable. It acquires energy and it becomes unstable. 
An excited electron can also emit light of a photon or quantum of energy to be able to now fall back to its original state. It receives energy by heating or bombardment, it gains some energy, having higher energy than where it was before, but when it emits light, it will lose some of those energy, all of it, and fall back either to a lower energy level or to the ground state. Mathematically, an expression, this expression can be given to that relationship. Where E subscript N is the new energy level and E subscript 0 is the ground state. So E subscript 0 is the energy in the ground state. H is Planck's constant and F subscript N is the frequency of the emitted light. C is the velocity of light and lambda N is the wavelength of the emitted light. This is energy transition diagram. At the first step, we have the ground state. Then N is equal to 1, and we have the energy level there, E0. Let's look at when an electron is excited, when it acquires or absorbs some energy. From this ground state, it can acquire H, F, subscript 1 amount of energy to be able to move up to energy level E1 and it can acquire an additional packet of energy or quantum of energy H subscript F2 to be able to move to energy level E2. So moving from the ground state E subscript 0 to E2, it will need this much energy to be able to move from energy level E0, which is the ground state, to energy level E2. Two. Now let's look at what happens when it emits energy. Electron in energy level 3 can release some amount of energy to be able to come down to energy level 2 or even to the ground state. Now the difference between the energy level E2 and energy level E1 will give us the energy that is released when it falls from a higher energy level. In this case, falling from energy level 2 to energy level 1. So that is the energy transition that happens when an electron is excited or when it emits energy. Let's look at an example of all that we have been going through today. In this example, an atom is excited to an energy level of E2 and it is minus 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 joules and it falls to the ground state E subscript 0 at minus 19.8 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. Now we need to calculate the frequency and wavelength of the emitted photon. We have been given the velocity of light as 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second and Planck's constant as 6.6 times 10 to the power minus 34 joules. So, from what we have just discussed, the energy that is emitted is going to be energy level 2 minus energy level 0, which is the ground state, to be able to get the energy that is emitted. So E2 is minus 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power minus 19 minus E zero, which is minus 19.8 times 10 to the power minus 19. So if we do this math, we're going to get 13.2 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. So that is the energy that is emitted. So to be able to find the frequency, E is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency. So it means that the frequency is E all over the Planck's constant. So what is E? 13.2 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 all over H, which is 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34. If we do this math, we're going to get 2 times 10 raised to the power 15 Hz. That is going to be the frequency of the emitted photon. To be able to get the wavelength, 
F multiplied by lambda, which is the wavelength, is equal to C, which is the velocity of light. So the wavelength lambda can be obtained C all over F, where C is 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second, and F, like we obtained here, is 2 times 10 to the power 15 hertz. If we do this math, we're going to have 1.5 times 10 to the power minus 7 meters as the wavelength. So we have been able to calculate the frequency and the wavelength of this atom. So next, we're looking at photoelectric effect. Now, what is photoelectric effect? As seen from this diagram, we have a photocell before us. An incident light comes in contact with a metal surface, and there is a release of radiation in the form of electrons. That is basically what electric effect is. Incident light coming in contact with a metal surface, and in the process, there is a release of an electron. So when light falls on a metal surface, electrons are emitted in what is, I've just explained, a photoelectric effect. The emitted electrons are also called photoelectrons. Now, these emitted electrons move off the surface of the metal at a kinetic energy. Now, this kinetic energy is independent of the intensity of the incident light. Now, the kinetic energy has a velocity in it. So, the velocity of the photoelectron, however, is proportional to the frequency or wavelength of the incident light. Let's look at a plot of the maximum kinetic energy of electrons as against the frequency of the incident light. On this graph, we have the maximum kinetic energy that the electrons will move off with from the surface of the metal. And on the x-axis, we have the frequency of the incident light. Now, what happens is, as the frequency of the incident light is increased from zero, nothing happens on the surface of the metal. But as the frequency is increased to a point called F0, at F0, the electrons just leaves the surface of the metal, meaning it is knocked off the surface of the metal, but it has not started moving at a velocity. And as the frequency of light is increased, the electron that is knocked off the surface of the metal begins to move at an increased kinetic energy and an increased velocity. So as the frequency is increasing, we will see an increase in the kinetic energy of the electrons. Now, where the electron just begins to leave the surface of the metal, that is called the threshold frequency, that frequency at which the electrons begin to leave the surface of the metal is called threshold frequency. And the work that is done in removing the electron from the surface of the metal is called a work function like we're going to be seeing shortly. So the threshold frequency is the frequency of light which when it falls on a surface is just sufficient enough to liberate the electrons without giving them any additional kinetic energy, meaning it doesn't move and it's still within the metal. While the work function W is, the work function of a metal is the minimum energy that is required to liberate an electron from a metal surface and mathematically it is given by w equals h multiplied by f naught where w is the work function and f naught is the threshold frequency so what have we been looking at in this part one in part one we'll be looking at 
the fact that electrons in an atom exist in discrete or quantized energy state. And according to Planck's theory of radiation, suggests that energy is emitted from heated bodies in discrete or separate packet known as energy quanta. And then in photoelectric effect, we also saw that electrons are emitted from the surface of a metal when an electromagnetic wave such as light falls on the metal surface. And we looked at how this happens by defining threshold frequency as the lowest frequency that can cause photo emission to occur from a metallic surface. And finally, we talked about work function, which is the minimum energy required to liberate an electron from the surface of a metal. Let's now look at a few practice questions just to remind ourselves about what we have learned. So the first question says, which of the following phenomena is called photoelectric effect? Is it A, high energy electrons impinge on metallic anode which then emits photons? Or is it B, a high energy photon as it is slowed down? Or C, a metal absorbs quantum of light and then emits electrons? Or D, two electrons are created from a quantum of light? What do you think? Obviously, the answer is C, from what we discussed, a metal absorbs quanta of light and then emits an electron. That is what photoelectric effect is. And let's look now at another question from what we have learned. When a radiation strikes a metal surface, electrons may be ejected from the metal. The maximum kinetic energy which may be acquired by an ejected electron depends on what? A. Is it on the intensity of the radiation? Or B. Is it on the source of the radiation? Or C. Is it on the wavelength of the radiation? Or D. On the detection device for the electron? Now from what we discussed, we say the intensity of the radiation is independent of the kinetic energy. So the answer is C. The wavelength of the radiation is what the maximum kinetic energy is dependent on. So that brings us to the end of part one of energy quantization. I hope you have enjoyed it. We will see you again in the next class when we look at part two of energy quantization. Thank you.